This is how to measure your heart rate variability, or HRV, with an Aura Ring in order to optimize your exercise performance and your recovery. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn of ChrisMasterjohnPhD.com, and this is Chris Master John Light, where the name of the game is Details, Shmeetails, just tell me what works. And today we're talking about using HRV, or heart rate variability, to optimize exercise performance and recovery. So what I would recommend is as follows. First of all, what is heart rate variability? Your heart rate is not supposed to stay the same all the time. It's supposed to change gradually as you inhale and as you exhale. And the degree to which it changes in accordance with your breathing is called your heart rate variability. More heart rate variability in general is considered a good thing. And exercise, when it saps your reserves to the point where you need to recover and maybe take some time off or at least get some rest and some good food in and some sleep, that will tend to tank your HRV. It'll make your HRV go down. And so you, in theory, should be able to use your HRV as a metric of how recovered you are. So the first thing that you need is a good mechanism, a good way, a good tool to measure your HRV. There are several ways to do this, and I will list a few of them in the description of this episode, but what I would recommend is using the Aura Ring. Now, once you have a tool, the second thing is you need to figure out your baseline. It does you no good to try to figure out when you are and aren't recovered if you have no idea what your HRV is when you're fully recovered. So what I would do is start tracking your HRV, get used to doing it on a daily basis, make sure you have it all figured out, And once you're confident that you're tracking it correctly, now take a break. I mean a complete break from exercising. Make sure that you're you're not on a diet, you're getting all the calories you need, you're eating a good diet, you're eating enough food, you're not trying to impose a lot of restrictions on yourself, you're not trying to put a lot of stressors on yourself, Uh, you're just relaxed, you're kind of taking a vacation from everything except eating healthily and sleeping well and resting, right? So you take some time off from your exercise and uh, you just look at how your HRV recovers. In theory, your HRV should get better and get better and get better. And then at some point it stops getting better because you've hit your baseline. You are fully recovered. So you just want to take time off, whether it's taking an entire week off of your exercise routine. Maybe it's taking two weeks if you really need to. Follow the data and make sure that there's Several days have gone by where your HRV is not improving any further with taking more rest. At that point, you can be confident that you have actually achieved peak recovery. Then step three is that you want to uh, start exercising the way you usually do. And when you do that, you should see your HRV tank and then you should see your HRV go back to baseline. You want to be able to replicate that your normal exercise routine is taking approximately two days to recover, three days to recover, four days to recover, whatever it is. Once you determine how long your average recovery time is, you want to you want to incorporate that into your training protocol. So if perhaps you were working out every other day, but now by step three, you've determined that it takes you three days to recover from one workout. What you're going to start doing now is you're going to start waiting three days to recover from your workout every time you work out. Now you should be able to show that this is replicable. Uh, you know, each time you you work out, you on average are most of the time reaching peak recovery after the days of rest that you've determined you need. Step four is to figure out whether there are certain things within your workout that cause that cause you to need more recovery time than others. In other words, you might find that weightlifting causes a different need for recovery time than cardio. You almost certainly will find that doing high-intensity interval training recovers a lot more recovery time than steady-state cardio. But you might find that when you do weightlifting in a five-rep range, it causes a different recovery time than in a 15-rep range. And so you got to figure out all the all the different elements of your usual workout routine, figure out how those impact your recovery time. And then once you determine that, you can incorporate that knowledge into your training protocol by setting different recovery times for different types of workouts. Another thing you might find is that working out your upper body 
causes a different recovery time than your lower body if you're doing a split like that. And then finally, step five is once you've incorporated that, you now start tweaking with the things you can do for recovery to see if they improve your recovery speed. So uh, maybe when you eat more carbs, you recover faster. Maybe when you eat certain types of foods, you recover faster. Maybe when you do meditation, you recover faster. So find all the, brainstorm all the different things that might affect your recovery time and test them one by one. The important thing to do when you're testing these things is to do them one at a time and get good, rep, good repeatable data because if you try too many things at once or you don't repeat the test, you'll never know whether the data is actually high quality and is actually replicable. So once you have achieved step five, you can keep on going in many different ways over time, you might come up with new ideas or you might read something new that might affect your recovery time. Now you have really good baseline data. You have, really good, um, you have a really good foundation to be able to take something new and test whether it deserves to become part of your routine. This episode is brought to you by Ancestral Supplements Living Collagen. Our Native American ancestors believed that eating the organs from a healthy animal would support the health of the corresponding organ of the individual. Ancestral Supplements has a nose-to-tail product line of grass-fed liver, organs, living collagen, bone marrow, and more, all in the convenience of a capsule. For more information or to buy any of their products, go to ancestralsupplements.com. This episode is brought to you by Ample. Ample is a meal in a bottle that takes a total of two minutes to prepare, consume, and clean up. It provides a balance of fat, protein, and carbs, plus all the vitamins and minerals you need in a single meal, all from a blend of natural ingredients. It's available in original, vegan, and keto versions, portioned as either 400 or 600 calories per meal. I'm an advisor to Ample, and I use it to save time when I'm working on major projects on a tight schedule. It keeps my brain going while I power through the day, never letting food prep get in the way of my productivity. Head to amplemeal.com and enter the promo code CHRIS15 at checkout for a 15% discount off your first order. For ad-free versions of these episodes with transcripts that you can read and getting early access to the episodes often weeks or maybe even months ahead of time, you can sign up for the CMJ Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code LIGHT10 to get 10% lifetime discount. The audio of this episode was enhanced and post-processed by Bob Devodian of Torian Mixing. You can find more of his work at torianonlinemixing.com. All right, I hope you find this useful. Signing off, this is Chris Masterjohn of chrismasterjohnphd.com. This has been Chris Masterjohn Light, and I will see you in the next episode.